we're trying to evoke um, some of the different eras of Transformers, yep. uh, namely the late 80s Micromaster era, but also the Target Masters. Um, we're also introducing a line-wide gimmick which allows fans to customize and kind of uh, create their characters ready for battle. But what's cool about it is that we're not actually trying to force any gimmicks in, like miners or headmasters, unless it makes sense with the character. So I think for this first chapter, we're definitely trying to channel that original 84 pilot um, to try to get uh, you know some of that Cybertronian feel. Yeah. We know that that 84 pilot had such a short amount of uh, stuff in it. Yeah. But we're trying to make it expand out into a special universe for fans. It's kind of cool. It's, it's very cool. It's, it's a lot of fun to work on. I tell you, this diorama was a lot of fun to build. I bet. Looks this looks like so crazy. cool. Now, it looks like some of these guys have uh, weather, weathered paint That's jobs correct, or yeah. vandal paint jobs or something? Yeah, there is, there is weathering. Um, you'll notice some have it more than others. In some cases, we tried to keep the weathering uh, to a minimum. Like, if you look at uh, Sideswipe here, it's very clean because that's his personality, but you yep. look at his robot mode, he's got weathering on his on his legs and feet. Um, the weathering is meant to uh, kind of show the place in Transformers history that we're at with War for Cybertron. This is a, a gritty retelling of that original 84 pilot, uh, so we wanted to make sure that these guys uh, kind of have that visual story to them. This is their last day on Cybertron, this is their last opportunity to fight for what they believe in, and when fans are putting together their diorama on shelf or their display, we want to really bring that to life in a way that I think fans really have never experienced before. And I think that's the reason why you see all the little clear pla uh, blast effects and things like that. It's bringing a level of dimension to our collective shelf. Oh, cool. But it is fun to be able to sneak in things like micromancers <laughs> and robots in disguise moves and things like that. Well, I was telling Ryan on the way up the elevator, my kids are really into city play, and they're playing with, with uh, Metroplex, and they've got, and they're pulling all of my like old uh, the GoBots cars when they were G2 era, oh, yeah, those yeah, yeah. things, and they're using those all over the city. So seeing MicroMasters is very exciting. They're gonna love that. I they're gonna started, totally I get started up. pulling out my old stuff. Yeah. yeah. What's great about uh, being a Transformers collector nowadays is we're actually finding that so many of our new collectors are kids that are like, hey, we just demand that higher level of articulation and the challenge of a, of a more difficult Transformer. But we're actually finding a lot of uh, parents who are up with it, whether it's G1, G1 fans or B4 fans, they're playing with their kids and they're, they're enjoying collecting together. So I think with this line, we're kind of building a lot of research. So Two of the original four members are are the other. What's that? Like with with the teams that you see, two of the members of the four are their plans to do the other two at a later date. No. Okay. The two packs will be available in kind of a legend's price point. Okay. Okay. Right now, because of the way the line is structured, oh there's just okay. okay. Thank you. The face sculpts hey, look awesome on these. Nice. How are you, John? Good. How's your 
trip out here. Yeah. 